family. Good morning. If you will take your Bibles and turn them to the book of John. And we're going to look at verses 43 through verse 51. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no guile. Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter you shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the son of man. May God have a blessing in the reading and hearing of his word. Father, my God, you are indeed worthy. We thank you for the privilege of praising you and giving you the honor and glory that you so richly deserve. We pray, Lord God, that you would arrest our attention uh, to behold the Lamb of God, to focus our gaze upon you. Might we never be the same because we heard your voice through the word of God this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If I sound a little more mature today, it's because I'm fighting some things uh, uh, that we're going to get through by the grace of God. Amen. 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 All right, you ever get one of those phone calls from a telemarketer? You know they're trying to get you to spend some money, but they start talking about something and they, they love to make it sound like it's too good to be true. You'd be crazy not to take advantage of this deal, but you know at the end of the day, it's something you have to go look at, something you, you have to see. Well, I got something I want you to see this morning. I want you to see Jesus in a new light. All right. The Bible's open to the Word of God in John chapter 1. Remember last week we shared John, the baptizer, had this in, these encounters with the Lord Jesus. And after our, our passages today, you really don't see any more dialogue between the two of them. John would lose his life at an early age, but what a powerful ministry he had. And and John is going to do what we all should do, which is point others to Jesus. John chapter 1 and verse 35, the word of God says again the next day, John stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. You recall that John had baptized Jesus, and after that, the Spirit of God led Jesus in the wilderness to be tested and tempted by the enemy for 40 days. And then he comes back, and he reappears, and John faithfully points him out. And he had said, that's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And, and then in verse 35, in his next appearance, John says, behold, the Lamb of God. Have you ever beheld Lamb of God, have you ever let your attention just lock in and focus on him? We, we live in an attention deficit generation. If you, you notice on television, even now the commercials, every two seconds, different image, different image, hard to focus. John says, I want you to lock in on the Lamb of God. Take a good look. Let him arrest your attention. He deserves your undivided attention attention. And as his disciples did that, you notice the response? They left John to follow Jesus. See, that's what we're all here for. Amen. To live in such a way that by what we do and what we say, we get others to follow Jesus. 
You remember the warning to the church? Paul said, there are going to come people from an, an inside the church and outside the church, not seeking to make disciples of Jesus, but seeking to make disciples of themselves. Our job is to point others to Jesus Christ. Live in such a way that people want to follow Jesus from what they learn about him from you. So these disciples follow Jesus. And, and then in verse 38, I'm on the second point already. I'm, I'm moving fast because Kenny just said if you talk too long, it means you're going to be lying. So <laughs> <laughs> So, so in verse 38, as these disciples start to follow Jesus, the scripture says Jesus turns and he asks them a question. And I want all of us to take a moment to answer this question ourselves this morning. To, to all that will follow Jesus, he has a question for you that needs to be answered honestly. You notice Jesus looked at the two disciples following him and said, what are you looking for? See, John the baptizer had already said, that's the Lamb of God. That's the one who takes away the sins of the world. So they start to follow him. Jesus turns and looks at them and says, okay, what are you looking for? Can I pose that question to you this morning, you who are a follower of Jesus? What are you looking for? What are you seeking? What are you seeking from him, what's the central aspiration? Or what's the driving factor behind all that you do? See, we have to be so careful nowadays because you got folks telling you, follow Jesus so you can become wealthy. <laughs> follow Jesus so you can have an easy life. Follow Jesus so you can get the relationship of your dreams. Follow Jesus so that you can get what you want, when you want it, Without commitment. Jesus is your Santa Claus. Jesus is your candy machine. Jesus is, follow him and get what you want. Jesus said, okay, what are you looking for? Why are you following me? Oh, Lord, I'm, I'm miserable. And I heard if I follow you, you will hook me up. And as soon as I get what I want, I'm out of here, by the way. What are you looking for? from Jesus. We've encouraged a generation of churchgoers that are not a generation of disciples. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 45, if you're familiar with Jeremiah, you know his life of following Jesus brought him a lot of heartache. He had this wicked king that tried to burn the scriptures and thought he was getting rid of the word of God, but you know that never works. God just raised up another scribe to recopy. And, and so Barak was faithful to, to the cause, but he was going through a hard time. And he was saying, oh, woe is me, a lot of grief and a lot of adversity and things are going wrong. He was, he was following the Lord, but having difficulty. And, and the Lord said something to him. I want to call your attention to it. It's on your outline. Do you seek great things for yourself? Don't do that. Behold, I will bring adversity on all flesh, says the Lord. But I will give you your life to you as a prize in all places wherever you go. In the midst of problems, in the midst of what was going to be an overrun of the nation, in the midst of hard times, God is telling Barak, you know, you're, you're seeking great things. Don't, don't worry about that. Hard times are coming, but you know what? I'm going to give you your life as a prize. See, there are times we should stop seeking all these self-centered, I want to be great. God said, you should be thankful that I've given you a life. Amen. And especially if you have eternal life in Jesus Christ. Stop seeking things to make yourself great. Seek to make his name famous. Have you noticed the people who are really all about making God's name famous in the process they became well known to? You get that backwards, you become another statistic who thought they could rob the glory from God. 
When Paul was talking to the saints and, and looking for disciples like himself, look, look at these indicting words in Philippians chapter 2. What a sad statement he had to make. For I have no one like-minded who will care for your condition. Why, Paul? For all seek their own and not the things which are of Jesus Christ. That is a sad indictment on a church, isn't it? Paul said, I'm, I'm looking for people who will faithfully shepherd and care, but I keep finding people who only care about themselves and not the things that are on the heart of God. Jesus said, what are you looking for as you follow me? Back to John chapter 1. When Jesus asks a question, he expects an answer. So they give him one. I'm in verse 38. Rabbi, which is to say, when translated, teacher. The word master is often the same word as teacher. The question they, the answer they give in response to the question of Jesus, you see, is another question. Where do you live? Where are you staying? Now, what does that mean? Jesus says, what are you looking for? They answer by saying, where are you staying? Now, they call him rabbi. Let's quick history lesson here. The typical Jewish boy, by age five, starts to read and memorize scripture. By age 10, they start to study the what we call the oral law. You you will recall the religious leaders had added all of their so-called interpretations, which to the Jewish people were just as binding and authoritative as scripture. So they thought. And so by age 10, the Jewish boy is learning all of that. He's, he's quoting scripture from memory. He's learning prayers by heart. Around 200 AD, they put these oral laws in in writing, if you see a book about the Mishnah, that's, that's all that is. And about 500 AD, the interpretations of the oral laws were also written down. We call that the Talmud. But some of that got so mixed up with the actual scripture that a lot of the Jewish people couldn't distinguish what God had originally said from what they'd been taught by their learned people. It's like putting a commentary on the same level of ground as the scripture itself. The commentary should help you understand. Right. But the word of God is authoritative, right. not the commentary. Right. Okay? Amen. Around age 13, the formal study would be concluded and the boys would learn a trade. We probably need to go back to that practice. So <laughs> our young men know how to work when they grow Amen. up. Amen? Amen. Most of the gifted ones would have a chance to go to the Bet Mishdrash. We call that the House of Interpretation. They continued to study at the synagogue till around eight, age 18 or 20. You may have noticed that you didn't see a synagogue in the Old Testament, but they're all over the New. Or during the time of the captivity, when they didn't have access to the temple, they had these places of learning rise up all over the place. They needed 10 male heads of household to form a synagogue. So there were a lot of synagogues all over the place. And they would go there to learn. They had synagogue leaders and teachers in every place and some of the most gifted would get the opportunity to follow along and journey with a rabbi. The goal of that rabbi was to live his life in such a way that I'm a living example of what it means to know and apply the word of God and so to hang out with the learned rabbi was a real gift a real blessing. A lot of them were what we call itinerant ministers where they would travel around and be supported by the gifts of the people they were teaching. And so to hang out with a rabbi was really special if the rabbi knew what he was talking about. <laughs> so when they were saying, Rabbi, where do you live? They're saying, we want to hang with you. We want to spend time with you. We want to learn more from you. Good answer. See, if you really desire to learn about Jesus, his word to you is exactly what he told these disciples. Follow me in John chapter 1, verse 39. 
Rabbi, where are you staying? Jesus said, come, and you will see. The Lord Jesus invites you to follow him, investigate life, and learn by sitting at his feet. He will enable you to see more than you ever imagined. Jesus, what are you all about? Come and see. Where are you taking me? Come and see. What's going to happen if I follow you? Come and see. Why sing the song, I'm a mighty good leader, if you're not going to let me lead you? All right. Come and see. I got a lot to show you. I can't show it all to you today, but come and see. Come and live with me. Come and learn from me. Don't just come to church on Sunday. Hang out with me all the time. Amen. Come and see. When you walk with the Lord Jesus, you'll be able to see the invisible God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. I looked at the verse yesterday in, in Hebrews where it talked about how Moses was able to endure all that he went through. And the scripture said he endured by seeing the one who is Invisible. Try to explain that to your kids. <laughs> the reason I can make it in life is because I'm always looking at the one that's impossible to see. Huh? <laughs> God will enable you to see that which is otherwise invisible if you let Jesus open your eyes. He's not going to force you, but he said, hey, come and see. Come and see. There is a God who can do exceedingly abundantly. Please, please behold those two words for a minute. Exceedingly, far beyond, abundantly, lavish, overflow, above all. Not some. All that you can ask or think. Hello. <laughs> Your wildest imagination about what you think the power of God is like. He said, you didn't even come close. <laughs> as smart as you think you are, you can't even begin to imagine how great I am. And I can do more than you ever dreamed of. But you got to come and see. See, some things you don't get to see until you're in relationship. <laughs> oh, by the way, that used to be, no, that still is how God wants relationships to be. There's something you ain't supposed to see until you're in relationship. <laughs> Not one night relationship. <laughs> Lifetime. That's how it's supposed to work. Amen. Jesus, come and see. I'm not going to show everything to people who just going to play with me for a minute. You come follow me for a lifetime, for an eternity. I will show you things that will blow your mind. Come and see. Look at verse 39. Can you get the pressure on me today? Verse 39. <laughs> they came and saw where he was staying. Now remember later on, Jesus would say what? Foxes have holes, birds have nests. I don't have anywhere to lay my... Where was he staying? I don't know. But they hung with him. John said, you know, it was about 10 o'clock. And what happened? By spending time with Jesus, verse 40, one of the two who heard John speak, one of his disciples that followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. 
There must have been a riveting conversation there. See, John had already said, that's the Lamb of God. They said, hey, we want to hang with you. Jesus said, come on. Right away, he's out there. Hey, hey, bro, guess what? <laughs> this is the real deal. This is Jesus. Yeah. This is the one the scripture talked about. Yeah. He brought his own brother to Jesus. Verse 42. Jesus looked at him and said, you're Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. See, if your eyes have been opened by the Lord, you'll want to tell others to come and see. I, I have a problem with Christians who don't want to share their faith. If you've really seen him, it's hard not to tell. Have you noticed when, when you go to a good movie, you want to tell somebody, when you go to a good restaurant, you want to tell somebody, when you, when you enjoy something, you can't wait to tell your friends how good it was. So how is it that you say you have a relationship with the amazing, almighty God, and you don't want to talk about it? Excuse my grammar, but maybe you ain't seen nothing. <laughs> you you might have heard about someone you really never met. Because Jesus is so fascinating, you have to tell people. Yeah. So here comes Peter. Look, in the back of your outline. At their first meeting, don't miss it. At their first meeting. Jesus spoke a word to Peter and let him know what he would become. You're Simon, son of John. Guess what? I'm going to make you a little rock. You're going to become stable. You're going to become foundational. People are going to be able to follow you and build their lives upon what they're learning from you. You're going to be called a rock. Stone. See, the Lord that created you sees the potential he put in you. He'll reshape your life if you stay close to him. You may have grown up hearing a lot of lies from people around you who either loved you, who didn't love you like they should have, or, or maybe people just had you in a situation where they beat you down emotionally and, and you're living a self-defeated life. And Jesus said, you know what, I put a whole lot of potential in you. And if you stay close to me, I can make you be things you yeah. never thought yourself capable yeah. of. Yeah. <laughs> See, it doesn't matter if you got off to a bad start. It matters how you finish. Yeah. They don't hand out trophies to people who start running a marathon. <laughs> finish. Finish well. Cephas, you're going to become a stone. Let God speak into your life. There's so much he can do for you, but guess what? you got to come and see. Mm -hmm. Section four. It's not unusual for people to be skeptical about what you're learning about Jesus as you study scripture. Rather than argue with them, invite them to come and see for yourself. Verse 43, the word of God says, the following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, follow me. Come, come journey with me. <laughs> Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and all the prophets and also the prophets wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. I often remind people that people who have their eyes open spiritually recognize right away that the Old Testament scriptures were all pointing to Jesus Christ. Those who were spiritually blinded argued them down all day long. Those whose eyes had been opened this is the one they were writing about. Mm -hmm. 
This is who Moses was talking about. Here's the one the prophet with the same book. See, what you see depends on who you know. Amen. They had the same book the Pharisees and Sadducees had, and right away they're saying, this is him. Come and see. Nathaniel was skeptical like some of you. Really? Jesus said, what, Nazareth, that place? Galilee of the Gentiles? No, no way. Can, can anything good come, on, come out of Nazareth? <coughs> come and see. <laughs> that Bible study at your church can't be that good. Come and see. <laughs> your church can't be that loving. Come and see. <laughs> Don't argue with people all day. Invite them. Right. If you've really got something good going on, tell them, hey, you doubt me? Come and see. Jesus Christ can do more than you ever imagined. You need to come and learn the word. Amen. Well, I heard a preacher say this. I heard, oh, there's some lying preachers around. Let's keep it. <laughs> come study the scriptures. Right. And you will see. Amen. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Come and see. Look what happened. Verse 47. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Before I comment on that, I meant to make one point there. We're in section 4, letter A, look at this. But we also need to know the difference between an invitation to come and a summons to come. Mm -hmm. Ever get an invitation that said, hey, come to my party next week? Doesn't the word come in that context sounds different than when you get something that says, come to court next Friday? <laughs> 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 The same word can be an invitation, it can be a summons. So when you hear Jesus saying, follow me, you need to listen and say, is he suggesting? Or is he telling me I better follow him? See, it, it's, he, he gives you a choice, but let me tell you, it's dangerous not to follow him. Because to follow anyone else, you will wind up eternally lost separated from the love of God and torment forever. So you need to come and see and follow Jesus. And so as Nathaniel, the skeptic, comes, Jesus looks at him, hmm, here's an Israelite who, no deceit, no, no guile. He's, he keeps it real. I like that. Nathaniel is dumbfounded. Mm -hmm. Here's someone he's never had interaction with. Jesus seems to know his character already. How do you know me like that? Well, Nathaniel, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, right. I saw you. You, you mean... Before Philip came to invite me to come and meet you, you already knew all about me? Yeah. While you were sitting under the fig tree meditating, I saw you. I understand the fig tree was not right there, you know, 30 yards away where he could see. And some Jewish scholars believe that it's also a way of saying, you know, when you were young and sitting under the fig tree and relaxing and doing the things youngsters do, I knew you. Then. He didn't bother to say, I, I made the fig tree you were sitting on there. He didn't. Right, right. <laughs> but <laughs> I knew you before I met you. Wow. Now, the same Nathaniel who a minute ago said, Nothing good can come out of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. Are you looking at verse uh, 49? Mm -hmm. Rabbi, you're the son of God, <laughs> you're the king of Israel. Wow. One statement opened his blinded eyes, destroyed his skepticism. One statement. I knew you wow. 
before you knew me. And any good thing come out of Nazareth? Yeah. The, the Lord can bring miraculous things from the most unlikely places. Amen. Which includes wherever you might have come from. Amen. Come and see. If somebody may have told you you'll never amount to anything. Guess what? If you come to Jesus. Amen. If you come to Jesus. Amen. He can do amazing things through you. All he wants is the vessel. Mm -hmm. He'll supply the power. Amen. He'll give you the wisdom, the strength, the knowledge. And he wants a surrendered vessel. Yes. Yes. Come and see. Jesus saw you before you were aware of him. He knows what was on your mind. He wants you to open your eyes and see him in all of Scripture. Verse 50, Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, you believe? I'll show you greater things than that. <laughs> he said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, Hereafter you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Turn to Genesis 28 as we, we wrap up. Genesis chapter 28. Let's, let's conclude that when Nathaniel was sitting under the fig tree, he was reading or meditating on this passage of Scripture. It is interesting that Jesus uses this passage in his conversation with Nathaniel. Now, Jacob was an Israelite who had a lot of guile in him before he changed his nature to Israel. And he said, Nathaniel, you, you're not like him. There's no guile deceit in you. Not like in Jacob. Genesis 28, now Jacob went out from Beersheba, went toward Haran, came to a certain place, stayed there all night because the sun had set, took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head. He lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, to the north, and the south. And in you... And in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Jacob hears the promise that was made to his grandfather, that was made to his father, is now repeated to him as God gives him this dream. And he sees a ladder from earth to heaven and angels ascending and descending. And probably that's what Nathaniel was meditating on. And, and Jesus said, you're going to see the heavens open. The angels of God ascending and descending, not on a ladder, but me. That ladder was just a picture of me. I'm the one who gives access. I'm the one who has come down from heaven. That ladder was really all about me. You know, those folks who used to sing, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. Jesus said, I'm the one grants access. I'm the one who came down from heaven to rescue you. But there, see, there's a lot that you're not going to learn about Jesus unless you come and see. He says, come and see. You know, he said, I have, I've laid out this spread, and, and I've invited folks to come, and they don't, just don't want to come dine with me, but there's room at the table, but you got to come and see. If you're thirsty, guess what? I I got something that better than this. They call it living water. Living water. All right. It's a hype, you know, this is this is good. <laughs> you see, I got something called living water that will refresh you eternally and out of your belly. You'll be able to refresh others, but guess what? You're not gonna get that unless you come see. Jesus is inviting you this morning. I'm inviting you on behalf of him to to come and see. There's so much you're missing. There's so much he's not going to let you see until you really respond 
wholeheartedly to his invitation to come spend time with me, come journey with me, and learn about life, who I created you to be, come and see. Father, we thank you for the privilege of hearing your voice through your word this morning. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that indeed you would draw people from their sin to the Savior, that, that they would stop settling for so much less than what you want them to have. I pray that you would set someone free today in Jesus' name. I pray that you would raise up not churchgoers, but followers of Christ. Lord, for those of us who already have a relationship with you, I pray we too, Lord, would hear your invitation to come and see. There is so much more you want to show us. Help us, Lord, to be drawn, to be magnetized towards you so that we would come and see and that we'd be quick to tell others that they too can come and see. Pray, Lord, you would convict everyone who's seeking after you for all the wrong reasons. They would come and follow you, get their eyes opened, and let you get the glory out of their lives. Yes. Lord, refresh, fill, energize, and empower all of us for our good and your glory, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.